Welcome, Internet. This is everything I read in 2020. We know it's been a hell of a ride this year, and we all found ourselves with a little bit of extra time in our hands. I used this time wisely, part of it. I wasted a lot of time, too. Don't feel bad. We all had a shitty year. But I also had a chance to read a lot. So I just want to go over some of the books that I read on this year and which ones I would recommend you for 2021. In no order whatsoever. Start with this one. This is Grit by Angela Duckworth. It's a book that texts about how super high achievers manage their time and how they, they, they practice and how they get just amazing at what they are. It's, it's good. This, this book is amazing. Uh, I would re definitely recommend Angela Duckworth's Grit. It's just good. It's very good. Navigating the Art World. This book is also amazing. Uh, it's by Delphian, which is a gallery from, um, like an online gallery from London. And they just put into a book everything that they figured out that would help artists lead a better business life. So I would definitely recommend this. If you're an artist, read this. Creative Hub, how to show your work. This one is also for artists. This one is great because this one is free. You just need to pay like three euros shipping and they will send you this. It's by Creative Hub, which is a platform that assists artists online. And it's just so good. It gives you a lot of tips on how to better show your artwork, both online or offline. So there's, there's stuff out of how to be in an art fair or how to have a pop-up show or growing your network finding a commercial gallery or artist representation, it's good. I would recommend it for all artists out there. This one, this one's actually a cheat book because by the time I'm filming this, I haven't finished it. But it's How to Be an Artist by Jerry Saltz. He is the main art critic from the New York Times, so he knows his shit. He's been doing this stuff for like forever. And I would say Jerry Saltz has like the best art Instagram out there. Shout out to Jerry Sa Just has like very straightforward tips on how to be an artist. Uh, I, I just think that this is very good advice, very straightforward advice from somebody that really knows the art world for all them artists out there. Recommend it. Rennie Edo Lodge. Why I'm not talking to white people about race anymore. Uh, I would recommend this book too, but this is not by any means a pleasant read. It talks about racism and the causes of it and the consequences of it, uh, mainly in the UK, but it applies almost everywhere. It's just does, not going to make you feel good, but I think it's something important that we should all read a little bit more about. How to raise a plant and make it love you back. Uh, this one is nice. I got this for Christmas from my girlfriend. During the pandemic, I went a little bit crazy into the plant rabbit hole. And I think I bought like 30 plants this year. So this is a very nice book to help me how to take better care of my plants. Even though they're super happy and all my plants are growing fine. But always nice to know a little bit about your hobbies. Company of One from Paul Jarvis. This book is very interesting. It's the last book I read this year. It's about house a lot of companies and a lot of businesses are just focused on growth and not in quality and this book might sound a little bit counterproductive if you're running a business or, or a freelance or an art career uh, because it doesn't put its emphasis on growing as fast as you can it talks about how you can grow slowly and stable and get better connections with your audience or your clients. So I would definitely recommend it as well. Bunny by Mona Awad. This one I got, I borrowed this from my art manager, Natalie. Natalie, if you're seeing this, I need to give this back to you. But it's a super fun book about these girls in art school. And one of them is kind of like an outcast and she's dealing with some others that are kind of like, uh, Think about Clueless, the movie, you know, like, uh, and, and it's just like surreal. It's crazy. Some crazy shit happens. You know, there's a lot of bunnies involved. Definitely recommend this book. Yeah, awesome. Too. Utopia for Realists by Rutger Bergman. 
Rutger Bregman. <laughs> Rutger Bregman. Uh, he is a Dutch historian. He got very famous a couple of years ago when he went to the Davos Financial Forum and told that the biggest problem right now is tax evasion. And I really don't think that all that rich people liked hearing that. So, so it basically tells how we can build a utopia for our world, basically with what we have right now. You know, one of, one of the most interesting things I read from this book was the sheer economic value that would be created if we just open up all borders, like tomorrow, open borders for everybody. Um, it might sound counterintuitive, you know, if you, you, you hear uh, assholes about their views in um, migration, but it just proves with scientific facts how much it would actually improve the economy in the long term. And a lot of other things like food waste, like how as a society uh, we're already producing enough food for everybody. Nobody should be hungry in the world. We have enough food. The problem is how we distribute this food, for example. So a, a lot of other stuff. So if you want to feel a little bit better about what we could be as a society, this book is great. But it can also make you feel very sad because we could be a great humankind, but we're just like unkind. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Stefan Zweig, chess. Uh, this is this is a little short little novel. This is great. Got this as a present from my girlfriend. Uh, it is the story about a man that gets trapped during Nazi Germany, and develops uh, becomes obsessed with chess, and chess kind of becomes the thing that saves him from this shitty moment that he fi finds himself in. I'm not giving away a lot of the book, but I would definitely recommend it. This is like super good, super, super tiny, super tiny. So it's like two days, you can read this. TED Talks by Chris Anderson. So this one, uh, I got it because I love TED Talks and I love talking in public. This counts as talking in public, I guess. So this is by the CEO of TED Talks. So the guy that runs the whole shebang. And it talks about the advice that he gives to, he and his team give to aspiring TED Talk curs, people that want to give TED Talks. So it basically goes over how to talk about something that you're passionate about and that you know a lot about, but making it accessible. So in my case, it helped me a lot about art and art market and art business to an audience that is not such as an expert as I am. Uh, humble here, uh, but it talks about how you can connect with an audience that might not know anything about your subject, but still making it into um, dynamic and interesting and, and, you know, compelling talk. So if you have any interest in, in being able to communicate better your practice or give public speaking a chance, you know, I would recommend this book. It's great. Great. Super good. And you can see, you know, all the, the, the little notes that I did, so, so you can bet it's, it's good as fuck. Ooh, Hans Falada, Alone in Berlin. This one is also not pleasant at all. Uh, this is a book about a couple, uh, a married couple during Second World War, and they start fighting the system, you might say, by creating handmade postcards with, with reactionary messages. And it's just like a beautiful story about how one human being can fight a system of oppression and how it doesn't matter the results of this fight against oppression. The important thing is that inside you, you're not accepting these, this oppression and, and that you're finding ways to, to, to put your grain of salt towards changing the world. It's sad as fuck but it's super good. I would also recommend having a look into the story of the author, Hans Falada. Uh, it was kind of crazy. He became mayor at some point of a city. Uh, he also had a lot of trouble with the Nazis. He wrote some stuff for the Nazis and the Nazis said kind of like, mm, this, is, this sounds very un-Nazi to us. So he had a lot of troubles during Second World War. So Read this book, maybe, and if you do, check out the Wikipedia article of the author because it is a doozy. Brené Brown, Dare to Lead. This one is amazing. This one is super good. 
Uh, Brené Brown is, is like a hero to me. She's just like straight on point on how you can lead people, how to get people around you at work or on your community, how to inspire them and how to lead by example, how to, to really be a great leader and, and help other people thrive and become better. And by, become, and by helping other people become better, I think that you become better by excellence. But I think that you know, trying to better yourself without making anybody better on the process is just a waste, you know? It's like empower yourself by empowering others and this is a great book to talk about that. Uh, let's grab one over here. Ian McEwan, Machines Like Me. This one, also a recommendation my girlfriend. This one's super good. This one is a sci-fi story based in the 80s in London. There's a weird love triangle with robot. Um, Alan Turing is still alive. Alan Turing, the guy that basically invented computing and was killed and was jailed by the UK government because he was gay. Mm, yeah. So yeah, you can help win the Second World War and still end up in jail if you were gay at the wrong time. You know? Talk about double standards there. And in this book, kind of Alan Turing became uh, kind of like Steve Jobs from the 80s. And there's also, you know, this, this it's like in the 80s, but there's like a lot of AI and technology happening. So it's, it's, it's good, it's very good. And, and you get to see a love triangle with robots. So how many times have you seen that before? So yeah. Mm. Yes, Becoming by Michelle Obama. Arguably the most, the most charismatic US first lady ever. This is the story of Michelle Obama. And uh, it just goes through her youth as, as a poor child in, in Chicago up into when she became first lady and had access to everything she wanted and everything she could desire. And she used this position to, to try and make everybody's life a little bit better. She, she, she had a great focus on, on health and nutrition and, and it's just great to see the story. It's very uplifting. And for me, the most interesting part that I see this is what's something that she called outsider bias. So she was raised, spent her whole life in Chicago, but had never had access to, to become a student of the University of Chicago. She went on to, I think like Yale or something like that, or Harvard or Princeton or something like that. She ended up in a great, great fancy university and was only paid attention to in Chicago when she met, went full circle and came back to Chicago. And, and that really resonated with me because my career in Buenos Aires as an artist was going places, but I always felt that it wasn't being recognized because I, I was local there. I started my career in Buenos Aires, so it was just like another Buenos Aires artist. But the moment I was able to move to Berlin and become an outsider, you know, and, and, and have this exotic vibe of being an outsider artist, it really catapulted my, my career forward. So I, I, I do think that sometimes we're just not as valued where we come from. And, you know, if you feel like that, just go around the world and then people will notice. <sighs> Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. This one, this one is super good. I love this one. This one, we found it on the street because in Berlin you can find amazing books in the street for free. And it has a, a inscription to a Natalie in 2017. So Natalie, thanks for your book. This one's good. It's uh, set in Moscow in the 1800s or something like that. And it all starts when a stranger walks into town. And then everything goes batshit crazy. Um, I'm not going to spoil a lot by saying that this stranger is Satan and some of his friends. My favorite character of this book is... Shit, what's the name? What's the name of the cat, honey? Behemoth. So, Behemoth, the talking cat, which is a demon, but it's amazing, it's amazing. It's just like a fever dream of craziness and, and madness and psychedelics. It's 
Whew, it's, it's a doozy. And it also has a very interesting story because Mikhail Bulgakov wrote this um, book during Stalin times and Stalin was like, hell no, we're not publishing that book. That, that book is like super anti-communist and, and it's just crazy and we don't do that kind of book. So this book was never published. Up until years and years and years after Bulgakov's death, they found a manuscript of this book lying around and they was like, whoa, Bukakov, like, this is a pretty dope book. Let's publish it now. So, published post mortem because Stalin didn't like it. So, if it's a book that Stalin didn't like, you should read it just to piss off Stalin. So, fuck you, Stalin. America by Eduardo Galeano. Or, as we call it in my part of the town, Las Venas Abiertas de Latino America. This one I got for my girlfriend but she hasn't read it because it didn't fit her book challenge for this year, but she promised she will read it 2021. Uh, this book talks about how every country in Europe took a giant dump in Latin America. They just arrived in Latin America, took everything that was worth anything and just got the fuck out of there. And how colonialism has real consequences and how Latin America is still living the consequences of their colonialism 200 years ago, 300 years ago, today. Uh, a, a, a funny, funny, let's call it a funny little aspect from this book is that it was published in 1971. So at one point, the author really praises the current Chilean government of Salvador Allende that had a very strong social input. They were trying to help people and, and make society better for Chileans. And the author makes the mistake of sounding hopeful about the future of Chile. Problem is like three years later, there was a horrible coup d'etat financed by the US, by the way. Uh, they bombed the, the Chilean White House, killed, well, no, Salvador Allende killed himself. And who did they put in charge after that? General Pinochet that if you don't know who General Pinochet is, go look at the Wikipedia. Short story is, he's an asshole. So, yeah, sorry Galeano, your hope was misplaced there. The Artist's Journey by Kent Nurburn. Nurburn. Uh, it's a book on making art and being an artist. This one is very good, you know, I'm obsessed about tips on being how a better artist. This one has absolutely no business tips at all. It's all about mindset, it's about motivation, it's about finding your voice. And it's a little bit refreshing and a very interesting parallel to my usual business-oriented art readings. But I would definitely recommend this because uh, it, it helped me through a time that I was feeling a little bit unmotivated and unhopeful about my art career. You know, uh, for me, it's very important to exhibit my art and, and to show my art out in the world. And I had very few chances to do this this year with all the pandemic and stuff. So this book really helped me look into my art careers with different eyes and still be able to be helpful about being an artist in the midst of our little Corona themed apocalyptic 2020. So yeah, I would recommend this to him too. Have a, have a look. Mm. Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Foer. Hmm. I love Jonathan Safran Foer. I like two or two other books from him, something like that. It's a very, very, very funny, whimsical, you know, kind of surreal author. And this book is nothing like that. <laughs> this book um, is about Jonathan's journey into veganism and just all the fucked up shit that happens to animals and uh, to sea creatures when you decide to put them on your plate. I'm not trying to put past judgment on anybody, you know, it's like I've been dabbling with veganism for for better part of this year. I would say I'm a 70% vegan, whatever. It just helps you make a little bit more peace with the decision of actually putting meat on your plate. And if you're still gonna do it, fine, do it. It's like, I'm not gonna judge, uh, but it should be important for you to know the consequences of that and at least to make some smart decisions into finding the kind of meat that doesn't fuck up the whole world and is not super cruel to animals. So read it, 
you'll be depressed. And we got Berlin Blues by Sven Regener. Also, present from my girlfriend. Uh, this is kind of like a, a novel about young people in Berlin. Literally five minutes, well, not literally, but like. What's the opposite of literally? Figuratively, figuratively five minutes before the, the Berlin Wall falls. If you know anything about history, uh, the Berlin Wall fell was kind of like a clusterfuck and they were like, it just happened from the day to the night. And it's just so funny to see these people living their life in Western Berlin, I want to say. Is it Western Berlin? Western Berlin. Um, just like completely oblivious that their life was going to change. And, and it's very funny. It's about this, this author called her, the, the character called Her Lemon. And it starts with a weird encounter with a crazy dog from Berlin. And I just love it because it was written in Berlin and I live in Berlin. So some of the places that they actually go and have a coffee or a drink or go swimming are places that I go like every week. When there's not a pandemic. So I just, I just found it fascinating to read a book that I'm kind of in it. You know, I could have been like an extra in the book, you know, and it's like, it's the same neighborhood as my neighborhood. So I really like it. Very good. Very, and funny. It's very funny, which is good. Oh, and the last book, Bag, Steal and Borrow by, what's the name of this guy? Robert Shore by Robert Shore, Bag, Steal and Borrow. This book was Amazing, amazing. Uh, I like this book so much that I actually made another video that the link is in the description about uh, how it's okay as an artist to just steal and borrow and, and mutate other artists' ideas into your own art practice. And I think it's very, very interesting to, to put this into the, the internet culture about how art evolves more and more into a meme format, you know, where you grab ideas that were done before you and concepts and, and pop culture elements and you kind of like mix them together, make something new. Only four in five minutes later, somebody comes, grabs that idea, remixes it, puts something new in it and serves it as their own, you know. And I think that just like this idea of, of ownership and, and idea ownership in the arts kind of like fucked up. So if you don't mind stealing from other people that done stuff before you, I would definitely recommend this book. So that's everything I read in 2020. It is a total of 21 books if I finish my book before New Year's Eve. Um, I'll, I'll be doing a special list like this, but with all my art books that I would recommend that I not necessarily read in 2020, but anyways. Um, hmm, how do I end this video? Anyway, if you have read any of these books, I would love to hear your opinion. If you're interested in reading any of these books and want, you know, ask some questions about them, feel free to comment, drop them off. If you saw all these books that I read and be like, Stefan, I got an amazing book recommendation because I saw what you read and I think you will love this book. I love getting book recommendations. And if not, well, I'll just see you guys on 2021, I guess. Stay creative.